young boy named Harley receives tickets to his favorite television show, The Banana Splits, which is a real-life property owned by Hanna-Barbera, and the show ran from 1968 to 1970. Things go awry when the animatronic characters are rebooted with corrupt programming, yeah, just like in Child's Play this year, and a bloodbath ensues. Now, it's pretty obvious this film is not going to win any major awards, or it's not going to be ranked as one of the all-time scariest films in anybody's top 10 categories, but I will give it this. It's an interesting concept, and you can't help but see the similarities and the inspiration of the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, video game that I never played but I'm very much aware of and my kids played it and it can be pretty frightening with all the jump scares but you see the inspiration and hints of nuances in this film so the concept's really original and I just finished seeing it and uh, it's 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 pretty it's a trip <laughs> uh, the acting is not going to win any awards the acting is what you expect with a film of this type of uh, atmosphere so to speak uh, really what the film specializes in is the set production and the lighting there's a lot of eerie uh, shots within the film where you see one of these characters uh, of the uh, banana splits gang just standing there and there's really great lighting around him the set design is really creepy so I got to hand it to you the production the lighting crew and the set designers everybody involved because it does have an eerie feeling to it and a lot of great shots the directing was great everything was top-notch except for the writing the writing was pretty bad. There's a lot of characters that you're supposed to connect with and sympathize. There's a lot of emotional moments in the film that take place, but not enough was built to really care about these people, really. And the dad in the film of the family who's going to see this uh, program, he's really kind of a douchebag. He's he's a stepfather and he's painted as a real douchebag. And every cliche you can think of in any Lifetime movie that a stepdad would say to a his stepson in, on his birthday is all present there. So you really, as an audience member, cannot wait till this guy is killed. And he's killed and you're pretty satisfied with how he goes. Spoilers. <laughs> and I have to hand it to the kills. The kills are really gory. I wasn't expecting the kills to be that graphic for a film like this, taking a, a children's concept and making it a horror film. So I gotta hand it to them. And if you can imagine being the writer for this movie, imagine this, you have a set, you know what the characters are, you know what their, like, uh, their, their set is, you know, they're a rock band, and there's a children's uh, magic show set over here, there's a jungle set. Imagine the fun you'd have writing up how these characters are killing the people on this show so it's pretty interesting and some of the kills were very inventive and i got a hand to that so bravo to the kills the lighting the set design and really just the concept it's really fun now there's a lot of nitpicks of course there's i would go more and say they're beyond nitpicks they're like major problems but <laughs> the banana splits gang it's obviously it's people in costumes right but the film wants us to believe that these are animatronic characters like five nights or freddy's and there's inconsistencies in the film where the plot, like I said, changes when these characters are rebooted in its corrupt software and they become evil, similar to Child's Play of this year. But it's pretty obvious it's somebody in a costume, but then there's scenes where all the characters are walking like robots, like Robocop, and they added the sound effects, like if it's uh, the Terminator walking, the mechanical sound effects. So it's inconsistent. So one minute they're running and dancing like somebody would be in a, in a suit, and then the next scene they're just kind of walking in formation as robots. So it's like, come on. <laughs> But this, like I said, this film's not going to win a lot of awards. As a horror fan, I want to check it out because it's a different concept. And I got to hand it to the writers and the, the producers of this film. Hollywood is really not doing all too well when it comes to horror. You have the Annabelle series, the Truth or Dare, the Slender Mans, all these jump scares, uh, crap fest that's really been coming out. So I got to hand it to the producers of this, of this film giving us something different. And I enjoyed it. But again, it's not for everyone. But if you're a horror fan and you just want to see something different, check it out. It's on Amazon right now. You can uh, rent it or buy it. Uh, I don't know what the cost is. Just check there. But give it a look. See, it's, it's a fun Saturday night popcorn movie that I think you'll get a kick out of. And as far as my rating for this film, knowing what it was walking in, I'm just going to give it a 75 out of 100. Anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on the Banana Splits movie. Uh, check it out if you get a chance. And I hope you enjoyed this review. And as always, thank you for watching Rudy's Movie Review, San Antonio's unofficial movie critic. Please take care, God bless, and live long and prosper. And I'm out. That song's stuck in my head now. <laughs>